and figure out all the different things that we can do. Spinach will be coming up soon because it's a good cold weather leaf. Some lettuces are starting already. Won't be long until, oh, geez. well, I'm pretty happy about the rhubarb. It is my favorite. I love rhubarb. I've been eating it a lot already. There we go. These are all getting cut up nice. And again, I'll just show you just a nice side. Oh, lucky I held that one up. It's got a funny spot there. We'll get rid of it. And his partner does too. No more. It's all gone. That spot is no longer an issue. And there. These are just, again, the smaller we cut it, the faster it's going to cook, the faster it's cooling, and the sooner we're sitting down with the everybody else. Rhubarb crisp. I thought because it's a holiday weekend, we can afford to spend a little extra effort and get ourselves a nice dessert going on too. Hopefully you or someone you know, maybe your neighbor, has a rhubarb patch that you can grab a hold of a little bit and, and get this made. I haven't noticed it in the grocery stores yet, but they certainly do carry it. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's stands at the farmer's market this weekend with rhubarb. I brought our sun for today for my garden, so I would imagine the farmer's market is going to have some. Of course they will. Of course they will. <laughs> and this is the time of year, if you don't always do the farmer's market, this is the time of year to start doing it because you're going to get fresh, you're going to get local, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with that. So if you're not always going to see that clever cut, I just want to make these a little narrower. <laughs> I won't be scary anymore, I promise. And then that one. And that. I want to keep skin on each piece. That's why I'm being picky. Because it looks nicer in the salad if you've got skin on it. Now, the sausages... I just picked up, they're these nice ones. I got honey garlic, but they had lots of varieties. And if you are a barbecuing family, then they were a better deal if you bought, um, if you bought two. If you buy two packs, it's two for 10. One pack is 597. So if you've got room in your freezer and you know you're gonna eat them over the course of the summer or the next few weeks anyway, then by all means, get that better too. They save two dollars on two packs. So how's that not a good idea? I thought it was a lot to put, you know, two packs for this. And also um, even at this price, I got the sausage for, oops, I did it again. I got the sausage for $5.97, <laughs> Shannon's nervous. Sausage for $5.97, the bacon, $4.97 the bacon is for a salad and the potatoes $2.97 so I got everything for $14 now of course I'm assuming that you got a few things the mayonnaise and chives I brought from my garden if you don't have chives pick up uh, green onions are a perfectly acceptable substitute give you the exact same effect and green onions you can usually get a bunch of green onions in the grocery store for under a dollar so we'll still bring in at the $15 mark which is our goal always and can you imagine how good this is going to be there that's all of them I have this for my hands which are very starchy now and for the record, nothing's happened. You can see, okay. <laughs> I know I was making it say nothing happened. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. It's gonna be easier to get them into the pot if I do it this way. That looks like a lot of potatoes, doesn't it? So we have nothing to think about there. We've got lots of potato salad coming our way. Oh, look at all the starch on the cutting board. Okay, this is just coming to a boil. I'm gonna add some salt. Don't be afraid, okay, don't be afraid. You gotta add salt to the pot. Number one, and two. There we go. And these are 
are going in. There we go. I might have to clean that up. And I think I've told you about the wooden spoon over the pot before. So there, that's just going to make sure that if I'm not paying immediate attention and it gets exciting behind me, then we've at least got something helping us along. The next thing, can you imagine the potatoes are already going, right? Too easy. This can go over here. We didn't even make any waste with the potatoes. I've got the orange peel that I was munching on before we started in there, but uh, you probably don't mind if I added to that. Next thing, hard boiled eggs for the potato salad. Now, hard boiled eggs, I've got some water in this pot. hard boiled eggs, this, that, and the other thing. There are so many versions on the internet of how to do it. First off, to make them easier to peel, add some baking soda to the water. I don't know why it works. There's some chemistry, science, I don't know. It doesn't matter why. It matters that it does. We don't need to torment ourselves with why on everything. So we're going to add just a little bit of baking soda. It doesn't matter why it works. I know it will. If you get farm fresh eggs, you might find that they're harder to peel. Fresh eggs are harder to peel. We're going to do four. If you've done a lot more potatoes, just think in terms of how many potatoes you've done and try to maintain, you know, an even balance of egg to potato. So I'm going to put four eggs in the pot. Doesn't matter if the water's boiling yet or not. We're hard boiling eggs here, okay? <laughs> not going to matter. In they go. <clears throat> I find there's so many versions. I find you really you want to bring them up to a hard boil, turn the heat down, keep them at a low boil, a simmer, for about 10 minutes, and then blast them with cold water. Okay? So you got to cool them fast. You have to cool them fast where you get that weird gray ring that kind of surrounds the yolk inside. So you gotta cool them fast, so we'll be ready. Okay? It's, it's really, it's key. Cooling them fast is key. So, and that gets rid of that ugly ring. There go. Okay, look, the potatoes and the eggs are already going. Next up, bacon. Bacon, bacon, bacon. One pound of bacon for $4.97, which is a decent good buy. We only need to use half a pound. I know that on this long weekend, somebody's going to be looking for bacon and eggs for breakfast. So lucky you, you're going to have half a pound ready to make them happy. And who are we kidding? You're never going to waste bacon, especially now in the summer. I, I mean, you do some hamburgers on the barbecue. You've got bacon for the top. You've got a nice head of romaine lettuce. You're going to have half a pound of bacon to make a Caesar salad. OK, it's not going to waste. I don't want to use this cutting board anymore. I'm going to keep it clean for our rhubarb. We'll get this one for the bacon, and then I can just keep things nice. The potato on my knife is not going to hurt the bacon. <laughs> now, I only want half the pound. Bacon's kind of messy when you open it, but you know what? It's delicious, and it's going to smell so good. And we're going to get over whatever slimy greasing is we're thinking about. Again, don't knock yourself out tormenting yourself. It's a visual hack. <laughs> it's a visual hack. We don't need to weigh anything or get thinking about anything too, too much. I want to chop it up because we're going to use it as a garnish in the salad. So I'm going to cut it into little pieces and, and, and fry it that way. I don't want to mess around with cutting it up later. It's going to cook easier and faster if we cut it now. And bacon is not always what it used to be. I, I mean, it, it's uh, sometimes it's not great. This looks okay. I've opened some 
packages of bacon in the last few years and thought, really? So, <laughs> an awful lot of fat there and not much in the way of actual meat. Who knows? Now, make sure if you don't already save your bacon fat. You're going to want it for a second. Remember the potato soup? We could have used bacon fat at the beginning or you sauteing some onions. So when we're all finished, save the fat. Keep a little, I'm sure your parents did this or somebody did in your past. You've got a coffee cup or a soup can or something like that in the refrigerator with bacon fat. And cut this nice new pan. Sometimes I don't want it to be stuck together. I want it separated. We're going to have messy pans, that's all. Sometimes the little pieces, they stick together and then they, they kind of stay together then when you go to cook them and it's hard to separate it. So just mess around a little bit help it and we're just going to set that on the stove then and let it go it won't matter i want it to be relatively crisp so that um how are my pots holy diamond ah, ah, look look how it works ah, ah, see see how it works isn't that smart that's fantastic look because i wasn't watching not at all thank heavens i had the spoon on right isn't that great? I kind of like that I came that close because now you now, now if it tries, you're going to be going for the wooden spoon now, aren't you? You're never going to not use it again. That's like my MO actually is to put all the potatoes over. That's that's what I do. It's it's an almost guarantee in my house that I will boil the potatoes over. I get walking away and doing other things, and then they go up quick. Look how quick they went. We barely did anything else, and they were boiling over. And, but not because of the wooden spoon. Don't use a stainless steel spoon though. It will get hot. It has to be a wooden spoon so you don't, you know, save the top of your stove but for the sake of burning your hand on the spoon. <laughs> Which, goodness knows, you could probably watch me do that. <laughs> this is coming along. You don't have to do the bacon. If you want to skip the bacon, obviously you can. I like it, and I think that most people do too. I, I think it, it makes your salad a little bit more. And I mean, it's nice, right? It's a nice touch. It's a little different, and, and that's nice to do something a little different than everyone else. Of course, if we all do it this way now, then so be it. <laughs> but. It's, I think with the potato soup, we talked about that too. It's not necessary, but it's nice. If you've got some and you want to use it, this is a good place. But your potato salad will be fine if you choose not to. And there we go. That's brilliant. Yeesh, I'm a little sticky. Okay, spread that out. And I'm going to move it to the back. I'm going to start it relatively low so that we draw some of that fat out and get it going. And then once I see some fat accumulating in there, then we can turn the heat up. Start it low. Now, this I can return to and wrap up in a bit. Look at that. In terms of our potato salad, the potatoes have started, the eggs are going, the bacon's going. We're going to just assume that that's good for the time being, okay? We can come back to all of that in a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of this one so I'm not tempted to use it for something else. We'll just set it there. Already going. And there we go. Just do that. I'm putting it on what I think is medium log. Okay. <laughs> it's a curve here. And this one, I'm going to turn my eggs up. They're not at a boil yet. And I'm going to turn my potatoes back up now that they're not at risk of boiling over again. Everything's happy. We can let it be. Ooh, hot dog. Washing up as we go along. <laughs> I'm going to 
you turn the bacon down, it's going so fast. I want it to slow down. I'm feeling pretty good again. There. Okay. I'm going to find another spatula for the bacon. And I'm just going to use this instead. The spatula was just going to tip out and cause me grief. Well, obviously, it was going to. It did. <laughs> it wasn't going to anymore. One of our crisps. I am already preheating the oven to 375. And that's the temperature we're going to do the sausages and the crisp fat. So it's already cruising along. We're going to start. I did go ahead and butter an 8x8 pan. You have a nice two liter round. So a two liter capacity, 8x8 or a nice round dish or anything at all. That's what you want to use for your crisps. That bacon is still going like lightning over here. it all. 
So, so I know I should worry about bigger things than my rhubarb, but I love it. I love it so much. I think that bacon's done. So before I carry on and forget about it, I'm going to get this bacon out of here. It's off and bring it over here. That's plenty crispy. I'm gonna, it's sizzling still, so I'm gonna let it sizzle away there for a second and then I'll drain that fat away. For now, that's gonna be fine. Because we wanna get on with this. That's coming up to a boil. And remember I said you want the eggs to come to a boil and then turn it back so that it's just off, just running at a low boil. And we go medium low on it, keeping an eye. Maybe I should stick a wooden spoon over it, just in case. I think it'll be fine. I think it's gonna be fine, but we don't need to have that happen again today. <laughs> that right there. So your eight by eight, honestly, I think if you look, that's a four cup measure. And honestly, I think if I dump that in there, it'd be pretty close. So I just want you to do that. Butter your casserole dump your rhubarb in there, okay? Spread it around a little bit. That's great, that's all. <laughs> Just like that. We're done with this cutting board. Uh, no, actually I'm gonna use it again for the chives, but I'm gonna get it out of the way. Before I go any further, let's get that bacon out of the fat. So, any dinner plate, a piece of paper towel. Okay, we want to get rid of the fat. I don't want all that fat in our salad. I want bacon in our salad. So, just, oh, it's, I, I, I'm a little bit tempted to, try, to have a piece because it's bacon. I'm not going to, but I'm confessing because if you're like me and you're tempted a little, you go ahead, you're in your own kitchen. I'm cooking for someone else. I won't eat it. If this was at home, I would definitely be, I'd be checking. That's what you're doing. You're checking. You're making it's quality control. Now, there's all of that. And just try to scooch it out of the, the fat as much as you can. I mean, we're draining it here, but I don't want to look at me worrying about that last little bit. <clears throat> that can sit there for a minute while I finish our delicious rhubarb crisp in the works. That done until we're ready now. We're just going to leave that for the time being. Back to the crisp. Oh. Rhubarb is a little tart. <laughs> so we need to add sugar. For this part, you'll see on here I've got two kinds of sugar, half brown and half a cup of plain sugar. The brown sugar is for our topping. So we want to put half a cup, this is a quarter cup measure, just sprinkle it on okay don't don't get too nervous about it you're just just giving it a little coating that's it that's going to be ready close that one up and now we can start our topping let me check those potatoes before i do that they're done they're done we're going to drain them first this will be waiting for us Take off my wooden spoon, set it there for now, and okay, turn her off. Right around to the sink, and we're just draining, okay? If you prefer to get a colander, by all means, do that. There's my spa for the day. And you know, who else has noticed this? You always can get more water off the potatoes. You think you've drained it all, you give them a little shake and more comes away. That's two. Shake them a little. And mind your hands. And that last little bit. There you go. They're pretty good. And they look fantastic. Now, I want them to cool. I don't want to run them under cold water. It will separate the skins from them and I want those skins to stay on. 
So we're just gonna leave them just like that. This can go in my dishwater now. That's brilliant, that's just fine like that. Look how we're tearing along here. We are getting this job done. Check these eggs, they're not boiling enough. Turning them back up. First step for this. You need half a cup of butter. So I've got half and a little here. Okay. <laughs> so push to that and that. There, that's half a cup of butter. You know what? Let's go ahead, throw caution to throw that in there. Let's not even think about it anymore. That would be crazy. I need to get a big spoon. Sorry, Shannon. I'm all over the place today. the butter there's again so many ways to make a crisp and the different toppings and such this is my version you have your own version of the topping go ahead I some of them have you mix all the dry and then melt the butter I never find it's just not as delicious I, I, I just mine is almost like a granola bar on top of the crisp and what's so wrong with that right <laughs> I like it to be more oats than flour I feel like the flour Topping on this makes me think more like a cobbler, like a peach cobbler. Oh, peach cobbler. Now that's got me thinking about peach cobblers. Um, mm. Coming soon. Peaches, what's that? July, late July, depends on the weather, but probably sometime in July. And uh, we'll have to make a peach cobbler. Last year I did peach pepper jelly, and I really like that. It was nice, it was a good combination. You're just softening it up. And you just want it there. Then we're going to add the brown sugar. Oh, okay. This is easy. And look, you're going to have dessert too. And that's fantastic because dessert is my favorite part. My brown sugar is my part. There. There. Now you know how strong I am. It's fantastic. Awesome, really. <laughs> you had no idea. Okay, same thing. We want half a cup. And brown sugar, you know, you want to pack into there. You want to press it down and make it full. Like that. There. I want this to be sealed up better. So before I forget, one of those elastics I've saved. And just do a little slip knot with it like that. That's going to keep it nicer for me. I don't know why I haven't already done that. But well, I have now. How are those eggs doing? They're okay. And now we're just going to blend the brown sugar in. And you want to make sure it's all mixed through. So we're making, oh, and it's, you know what, brown sugar and butter. We're, we're a little bit of cinnamon away from cinnamon toast. I am making myself hungry today. Hopefully, Dinah. I kind of want to go home and cook all of this for myself. <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Now, I should say this topping that I'm doing, any fruit will do. So in case we don't revisit the crisp, Future. That had baking soda on it. I'm not going to worry about it. I want to clean the top of the spoon off. This topping, I mean, use the exact same topping and approach for an apple crisp. If you've got blueberries, raspberries, apples, anything, really, anything at all, you can put or mix it up, right? You can throw a couple of apple wedges in there with your rhubarb if you don't have quite enough. Um, anything at all, mix it up, put it in there, add sugar according to the fruit. So rhubarb, we've done half a cup. Something like blueberries, you wouldn't need that much. And then with apples, I would always add cinnamon, but it's, you know, mix it up. But this is the, the easiest way to approach it. Next thing we need is a little bit of flour. I have down here. What have I got marked there? I'm going to do three quarters, but actually, I'm going to do half in here. 
there's a quarter, and there's half, and then I'm going to sprinkle not quite half on top. Rhubarb will just cook right down, so a little bit of flour in there is just going to, whoops, look what I did, I made a mess. A little bit of flour is just going to make sure that it doesn't get too sloppy on the bottom. It's just going to help to keep it from disappearing into the mountain. Those eggs are probably pretty good. The flour, we'll mix in the flour and then I'll get rid of the eggs. All for heaven's sakes. This is quite a day for me. It's like I've got an apron on. Just shake that off. There, that's forgotten, and we can sweep it up later. Oh, for heaven's sakes! I'm excited today. I think it's the hot weather. And go slow. Don't do it like me. Go slow, stirring in the flour. Just use the back of the spoon. Don't try to mix it. Famous last words. That puffed up like crazy. <laughs> Shannon is. Of course, laughing at me. I don't mind them laughable today. Okay. That. You know what I think it is? I'm very conscious of the fact that that stove is behind me and I don't know what's happening. So. <laughs> I think that's what it is. In your own kitchen, face the stove. <laughs> yeah. And you can see I've just blended it together. And we're getting a nice, thick, it's almost like I guess it's almost the consistency of, of icing. Okay, so if you want to know exactly how that's coming together, like an icing. Or, I mean, it's not falling off the spoon, is it? It's pretty thick. I'm going to take those eggs off before, we, before I make any more messes worrying about them. I'm going to head to this sink because I can't hold the handle and the pot. So over here, we want to cool them quickly. Start by doing it just in there. I've got this ready. I want to, I got a slotted spoon. You got to be careful. You don't want them to break. Just keep that cold water running over them. We're just going to overflow it. Grab a bowl right out of there. Get rid of that. Just keep that cold water running over them. I can get rid of that. That can go there. Honestly, I want these eggs to get cold fast. And now, keep going until they don't feel hot in your hands. Just keep that going. Rotate them a bit. This is how we get rid of the, the gray. And we can put them in there, put them in there, let that water run. We're gonna let them get good and cold. Once they're cool, then we can move them to the fridge. Just leave it a second, nothing bad is gonna happen. Over here, I measured out already one and a half cups of oats. So I did a mix of large oats and minute oats. If you've got quick oats, that's perfect. Any way you do it, you want one and a half cups. Dump them in. Just slowly mix it around. See how what I mean? How it's going to be like a big granola bar on top? It really is. I'm going to turn the faucet off. There. They're going to be fine. Let them get cool. And that's all the parts of our salad. Once the eggs are cool, then we'll be splitting them to work them into the dressing. But for now, we're concentrating on getting this crisp in the oven. Now with the rhubarb crisp, I like it just with a little like 10% cream poured over it. Just a little, like a couple of tablespoons. When you serve it at the table, that's what I like. Obviously a scoop of ice cream is a good idea. If you've got whipped cream, you can use that. Anything you've got really. Um, and, or nothing at all. I like a little bit of cream, but 
but you suit yourself on that. And I know that at my house, if I say, who want, does anybody want ice cream? Obviously they say yes. I mean, everybody wants ice cream. <laughs> and with the rhubarb, you know what's especially nice? I like like a butterscotch ripple or something like that with rhubarb. Plain vanilla is always a solution. And I'm just getting rid of that to clear it off. Now this is where I'm going to say, just get messy, I'm just breaking it up. I'm just making sure that there's no really kind of thick, thick sections that haven't been blended. Yum, you're gonna love this. You're gonna be so glad and don't forget any fruit will do, okay? Keep this recipe and use it for whatever fruit you've got when you need a dessert, easy peasy. I'm gonna wipe that off. That was my accident. Gone. All evidence gone. There. Now, just use your hands, okay? Don't uh, don't be nervous about it. Get in there. We want to sprinkle it around. We want to cover the top. Every now and again, I end up where I don't have quite enough, and if that happens, mix up a little bit more, okay? You know you have now the idea of the ratios and how it should look and feel. So if something happens that your dish has a bigger surface area to cover, or you just want to go extra thick with it, just make a little bit more. But you can see how easy this is. It's going to be going in the oven, and we're almost done with this part of the meal. The only thing that will be left is to make our, our dressing for the salad. There's all that. Look at how nice this is going to be. I promise you, like a granola bar on the top. It's so good and so simple. Right? It was so easy. I mean, I barely measured anything. And, and look, like no dishes. I used the same measuring cup for all of them. I always sound like I really hate doing dishes. I just, I, you know what I know? I know that it, it really, let's face it, it takes all the pleasure out of cooking if you have a mess of dishes to wash and a really like disastrous kitchen. That makes you not want to cook. So, Keeping it simple is the way to go and minimizing what feels like the not glorious work, right? Nobody shows up to help with the dishes. You can usually talk people into helping with making it, but not always cleaning. So you can see, I covered the surface. We're gonna stick this in the oven right now. It needs to go in for 35 minutes. Set it to one side because I'll be adding the sausages. And I already put 35 on my timer, so I'll just push start. We'll get these sausages in the oven next, and then we'll make our salad dressing. Look at this go. Just like we know what we're doing. So these are honey garlic. I, I know that they had Italian sausages, probably like original, like just plain like bratwurst or bangers, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> Any variety will do. And these are, if you pay attention to these things, these are the nice President's Choice Free From brand. So they're grain fed and, and ah, pretty, pretty nice. Look at that. But again, if you've got a barbecue, even better. We've got the oven on, so what the heck? We might as well do them in there. If you were gonna pan fry them, I would really suggest that you, you start by boiling them for like 20 minutes at a low boil, keep them at a simmer, and then drain them, add a little bit of fat to the pan and brown them up that way. I wouldn't um, just start by pan frying them. They'll get too dark on the outside before you're sure the inside is cooked. Get too soft, that's it. Into the oven it goes. There we go. That's it. We're gonna just let that go now for about the same amount of time as the crisp, but they should both be done at the same time. Give me a minute to clean up and then we're gonna start the dressing. Let's get the dressing made. 
When I started cleaning up, I moved my eggs, I drained that cold water off of them and moved them to the fridge just to speed up the cooling process. If you were making this salad in the morning, you don't need to speed it up. You could still wait for them to cool on their own. Similarly, I did at the halfway mark, so about 15, 20 minutes in, I turned the sausages just all the way over, just to brown them evenly. Let's start this dressing. Now, basically what I'm gonna do, I, if you've made deviled eggs, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to peel these eggs, separate the yolks from the whites, and make up my dressing using the yolks, just like the way you make the filling for your deviled eggs, right? Deviled eggs, now I cut it. What says picnic like deviled eggs? Deviled eggs are the best. I, I honestly love them and so does everyone in my house. My boys pop the whole thing in their mouth one shot, right? Yeah, one shot. The original two bite brownie. That's why they started making those two bite brownies probably. It was the deviled egg. And <laughs> I make up a great big pan of them and they'll be gone in a heartbeat because they're just pop, pop like that. See how easy these peel? I told you. The secret is a good long boil. And if ever they feel tight, do this. Roll it in your hand, just the way you do an orange or something, and it loosens it. You know how you like roll an orange or a lemon to get the peel to come away from it? Maybe you didn't know that, you do now. <laughs> and uh, if you do that with the eggs, it helps to loosen it so that you can get a hold of that membrane and get rid of it quick. These are going to be so good. So yeah, like deviled eggs, we're gonna chop up the whites and just stir them in. And then we're going to mash the yolks and stir the mayonnaise and low ground mustard, salt and pepper into that. And we're going to make a nice dressing for the salad. Obviously for a deviled egg, we keep it a little heavier than we're going to. We need it to be a dressing. So just like that just like that. And look at that, it's all coming away so easy peasy. The baking soda in the water, good long boil. Everybody says, how do you peel the eggs? It's so hard. Not like that, right? That was so easy. So now cut them in half and I'm gonna mix it up in here and just pluck that yolk out, okay? It'll just come out and it doesn't matter when you do deviled eggs, you're being careful not to tear the white because you need it to be your little vessel, right? But it doesn't matter if we tear it for this. We're gonna chop them up anyway. Look at that, there's a little secret shell hiding there. I got it, it's not hiding from me. And there we go. Look at that, that see how easy it is? And also note what I know, what, whoops, what's not there, what's not there? the gray ring, that horrible gray ring, okay? You've got, who wants that? That's always like, look, that would be gross, the gray ring. There's nothing wrong with it, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, I, when I was a kid, I always thought it meant that the egg was bad if there was a gray bit. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're rotten eggs. It's just, it's got something to do, that one had a little tiny bit. It was probably at the bottom or something and didn't get cooled as quickly. But sometimes it's like really dark and kind of creepy, so. The fast cool is the trick. I've got lucky hands, but there's my towel. Okay. We've hardly even done any compost this week. So it's almost disappointing. <laughs> any kind of mayonnaise, I had this left. I don't remember when we used the mayonnaise, but we didn't use all of it. So I had that left in the fridge. And now, just with a fork, you don't have to get carried away here and get out fancy tools. Just mash it up with the fork. Try to get it smooth, okay? You want it, you don't want bits in there. You want to mash it up, but at the same time, just a fork will do the trick. And just, I'm just cutting it up a bit. And there, that's probably pretty good right there. Then let's add a little bit of ground mustard. And this is not necessary, but I always add ground mustard to deviled eggs, egg salad, any of those things. It gives it just a little je ne sais quoi. I don't know, it's the right seasoning for it. It's just the right thing. And I figure I've just gone one and a half, two teaspoons. And we can zip that one up. 
a little bit of salt and pepper. Just go. We don't need to do too much because we'll put some on the top as well. But just a little bit all the way through our dressing. Blend it in. And that was another little piece there. And now our mayonnaise. Let's call that two tablespoons, four tablespoons. Let's see what six, no, let's go eight. Let's see, I'm, I'm looking at my pot of potatoes and I'm thinking, how much dressing am I going to need? So I'm always mindful of what I've got there. So that's how much I need. I need enough. I need enough dressing for my pot of potatoes. And now, just, I still have the fork, mostly because I want to keep my spoon clean in case I decide I want more mayonnaise. <laughs> it wouldn't be the end of the world to need to get a second spoon out, but for now. And I think I want that to be a little thinner. Right now, that is a little thick for a dressing. Don't forget, we want it to be a dressing. So, we'll just get one more really good spoon, and we'll see where that puts us. And see, that's looking better. It's, a, it's just a nicer consistency. So we want to be able to toss the potatoes in it and coat them. You could, if you have, if you have sour cream in the fridge that's already on the go or something, you can blend sour cream and mayonnaise. Or if you have a little bit of buttermilk, a little bit of buttermilk in there. I wouldn't go plain milk. I'm gonna go one more spoon because that's exactly the way I roll, right? By now you know I always go one more. You know what, you can always add one more, but if you put too much in right at the get-go, you can't take it away. And then you're going, oh, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna thicken that up? Perfect, look at this. See how that is? See, you see the consistency of that? It's, it's just, it's maintaining the feel of the mayonnaise, but I've got all that egg yolk mashed in there. Perfect. Now, let's start blending this. So we're gonna dump our potatoes into there. There's some strays, we'll pluck them out. There. And then, we're gonna chop up our whites, okay? So just no, no fancy here, just chop them up. You want them to be relatively small, but you don't need to. My goodness, when we were off camera, Shannon and I were talking, I am having quite the day today. Holy mackerel, the, the bacon was hissing and spitting and I dropped the, the lifter and I, I nearly cut my thumb there with the potatoes and I spilled the flour all over myself, but I've recovered nicely from that. That's telling me the food in the oven is done. We'll get that next. Nothing bad's gonna happen if I finish chopping up these eggs. And what else happened? Oh, the pot almost boiled over. Holy Dinah, right? There was a lot going on. We're all, it's a near miss kind of day. Near misses are okay. <laughs> it's okay for a near miss. And again, we're just chopping it up. Like that. I'm taking too long for the, the stuff in the oven. So, we've got two little pans in the oven. We will put this down so that I can bring the pans up. Actually, no, I don't even have to because I've got this beautiful new cooling rack. So, I can set my pans straight onto here. I will. Do that. A mat right? I was forgetting I had it. Do you do that when you get something new? You kind of forget that you even have it. I feel like I should have another one of these somewhere. I don't know where it went. I see it. Ah. Thank you, Shannon. I said I see it, but I, I saw it because Shannon pointed at it for me. Okay. There we go. Look at this. Sausages look great. And we can set them right there. And I'll tell you what, my crisp has been smelling so good. Look at that. Yum. See it bubbling through? How nice is that? And it can go right there. I don't know if you can hear it. It's pretty faint, maybe. The sausages are, are whistling. We can shut that off. Oh, peace. 
nice and quiet. We had the fan going for the stove and then the oven and now it's finally quiet and it'll sound like I'm yelling at you now. <laughs> I just want the chopped whites. It feels like we've got lots here and that's fine because they go in there and they just add to the texture and the taste of the salad. And they give a nice color in there as well because the white stands out against everything else. And there. This is a very little knife. It's kind of. There. Okay. These are all going to be done. And then the only other thing we're going to need to do is cut up our chives. And as I said before, if you don't have chives, which are growing like crazy in the garden. I couldn't resist grabbing some this morning because, I, I mean, I can't get through them fast enough. No way, they're, they're prolific and they'll keep growing and growing and growing. And so right now is the time to use them. If you have a chive plant, you can freeze them. They get a little soggy, but they're okay. They, they get a little bit soggy, but it's not the end of the world. And throw that in there. And that, don't waste any, get it all. <laughs> and there, look, isn't that gonna be great? There's that, and now our chives. I've got them right here. Look, I cut these and some of them even have buds on them. And isn't that brilliant? Look at that. <laughs> and do you know what? Last year was the first time I did it. But once they open up and they make their nice blossoms, you can use the blossoms, they're edible. And they're beautiful. And then you can throw them around on top of salads and stuff like that and they look so pretty. And everybody thinks you're a big deal. And that's really what we're all about here, right? It's looking like a bigger deal than our hard work amounts to. Okay, just chop them up. If you have a bunch of green onions, you're only going to use the green, okay? We just want the greens. So if you're using green onions, only cut the green parts and keep the, the white tips, the onion part, you'll be able to use them in something. Looks like I've got tons here. All of it. Isn't that nice? You hear them squeaking? That's a squeak of fresh cut. <laughs> right? It is, it's true. They don't squeak like that if they've been hanging around for long. I hope that you've got a plant you can just grow them in a pot, it's easy peasy. And, but they'll keep coming back if you've got a little corner in your garden where you can tuck some, you'll be so glad you did. And we'll just do that. Maybe I've got too many, what do you think? Will we hold, no, no, there's not too many. Let's throw them in. They're gonna add beautiful flavor. There, there's that. Give it a little shake. And back to our bacon. I'm getting a lot of stuff out. And you can see the bacon has just been sitting here and look, it got all the grease out of it. So you cook it up early enough that you can do that. And then I'm only gonna put in half of it because I want some for garnish on the top so that everybody can see the bacon that we're putting in. We don't wanna hide it all. We wanna show off the bacon, right? We wanna make a big deal about it and say, look at the bacon. <laughs> And I'm gonna ditch the fork. And I might actually <clears throat> use the plastic spoon that I had out because I don't wanna break my potatoes. If you have a spatula, a rubber spatula, that would work great. So you don't wanna bang them around too much. So, and I would just scoop it on there and start folding, okay? This is folding, literally. You're, you're just turning the bottom to the top. We don't want to stir hard or we're going to break up our potatoes and end up with mashed potato salad. So just folding it in and from the bottom to the top. Just moving it around. Look at how pretty this is going to be. And we'll get some more. I always start with a little because then it, it's easier to coat all of the Excuse me, it's easier to coat. I'm thirsty, it's so hot, right? And so then I'm not used to it. But if you start with a little, it's easier to blend it through. If you put all of it in at once, it feels like a mess. Oh my good, <clears throat> oh my goodness. 
How nice is this with the red skins, right? You need them. Okay. Now this is actually probably creamy enough. I've got a tiny bit more. I'm gonna ask Shannon's advice. Shannon, go for it or not? Shannon says yes, so we will. It's barely any more at all. And you know what? It does tend to thicken up in the fridge. So if you're not going to eat it right away, sometimes saving a little bit of dressing to stir on just before you serve it is a good idea. Because it, it right, it gets, gets a little thick as it sits. So that I'm done with. Look at us go. This is fantastic. There. And we'll make it look nice. Good, that's fully cooked. That's all even in there and everything. I'm gonna scrape that off. I don't wanna waste any of it. Not, not after all our hard work. There we go. Those can go there. I won't need more of that. We'll do a little, a little pepper on top. Do a little bit of salt on top, just a little. And then we're going to do a tiny bit of paprika because it makes it look nice. And then we'll add the rest of our bacon to the top of it. So just, this is purely decorative at this point, right? Like that just makes it look nice. That's just to gussy it up, gussy it up. <laughs> There's me being fancy. Ah, okay. And the rest of our bacon and i just want this bacon on top and you mark my words if you took this out to the table on the patio somebody is going to reach in and grab a piece of bacon off the top i guarantee it they're going to see it sitting there looking perfect and they're going to grab it because they're going to think i want that piece somebody will always grab it this is beautiful this is nice and crispy and you can practically crumble it but see how inviting it is with the bacon on top makes it look like something everybody's gonna wanna get. That's it. I'm gonna bring all the other food over so you can see what a beautiful meal we've made today. Because we have, we've got potato salad, gorgeous potato salad. We need this and this. Here comes our nice crisp, our dessert and sausages right there and we will be shortly i'm going to clean up my kitchen be packaging this up taking it to a family here in orangeville to enjoy no frills donated the food for us to prepare this meal today we're going to pay it forward send it out into the community where it will be enjoyed as it should be these sales are going to go until wednesday so that's may 26th Get in there, especially if you can do the two packs of sausages for $5 a pack, that's a good buy. So here we are, we've done all of this nice food. I know I brought the rhubarb from my garden, but it's not gonna cost you much to get some rhubarb. And like I say, good chance you've got a neighbor who's growing some. So all of this food was $15. I used a couple of things from the fridge that I'm sure you also have, a couple of eggs, some mayonnaise, some herbs, some like spices that we had. That's it. This is a beautiful meal. You're looking at $3 a plate, $4 a plate. This is a wonderful meal. And I hope that if you can, you can use your barbecue and really enjoy this meal outside. Please, when you watch the videos, like them, share them with your friends, get other people watching so they can take advantage of these good recipes and the good buys. And then subscribe so that each week you know when a new video is coming out and you can keep keep up with all these good recipes. Who knows, as this is the growing season, every week we're gonna feature something that's growing in the gardens in Ontario. Take good care, enjoy your holiday weekend.